there, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we have two stories from a collection called Aesop's Fables. Now, Aesop was a famous slave back in ancient Greece over 2,000 years ago who wrote lots of stories. The first one we're going to hear today is called The Hare and the Tortoise. Now, hare is another name for rabbit, so this story is about a rabbit and a turtle. Let's get started. The Hare and the Tortoise. A hare was making fun of the tortoise one day for being so slow. <laughs> Don't you ever get anywhere? <laughs> he asked with a mocking laugh. Yes, replied the tortoise, and I get there sooner than you think. I'll run you a race and prove it. The hare was much amused at the idea of running a race with a tortoise. <laughs> but for the fun of the thing, he agreed. <laughs> so the fox, who had consented to serve as judge, marked the distance and started the runners off. The hare was soon far out of sight. And to make the tortoise feel very deeply how ridiculous he was for him to try to race a hare, he lay down beside the course to Take a nap and wait until the tortoise should catch up. The tortoise, meanwhile, kept going, slowly but steadily, and after a time, passed the place where the hare lay sleeping. But the hare slept on very peacefully, and when at last he did wake up, the tortoise was near the goal. The hare ran now, his fastest, but he could not overtake the tortoise in time. And the lesson of this story is the race is not always won to the swiftest. Our second story from Aesop's Fables is called The Fox and the Crow. One bright morning, as the fox was following his sharp nose through the wood in search of a bite to eat, he saw a crow on the limb of a tree overhead. This was by no means the first crow that Fox had ever seen. What caught his attention this time and made him stop for a second look was that the lucky crow held a bit of cheese in her beak. <laughs> no need to search any farther, thought sly Master Fox. Here is a dainty bite for my breakfast. Up he trotted to the foot of the tree in which the crow was sitting. And looking up admiringly, he cried, Good morning, beautiful creature. The crow, her head cocked to the side, watched the fox suspiciously, but she kept her beak tightly closed on the cheese and did not return his greeting. <laughs> what a charming creature she is, said fox. How her feathers shine. What a beautiful form and what splendid wings. Such a wonderful bird should have a, a lovely voice, since everything else about her is so perfect. Could she sing just one song? I know I should hail her as queen of the birds. Listening to these flattering words, the crow forgot all of her suspicion and also her breakfast. She wanted very much to be called queen of all birds. So she opened her beak wide to utter the loudest caw, 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 and down fell the cheese straight into the fox's open mouth. <laughs> Thank you, said Master Fox sweetly as he walked off. Though it is cracked, you have a voice sure enough, but where are your wits? <laughs> The moral of this story is that the flatterer lives at the expense of those who will listen to him. <laughs> and those were our two stories for today. I hope you enjoyed them. And until next time, happy story time. <laughs>